Well, the relegation journey is about to begin. Danny Kish on pole position, the first of three races as they get ready to race their way, maybe into Formula Pro. What can Danny Kish do? He's got Philip Dreis alongside in the front row, Anilovsky and Gianmarco Viducci behind. We go racing for 10 minutes here at Imola in the first race. Great start there from Risto Cavani gets past Rory McDuff on the run down towards T1 as that is the move to the outside for NeedRacing.com. It's Philip Dreis trying to make it stick in way too deep though and that's a big moment from Danny Kish sweeping through to the race lead is Timotej Anilovsky. A big moment from Kish in the background. He's lost his front wing as I think slotting through in the rear end. That is Turka Hakkinen trying to make it three wide in the race down towards Villeneuve. Directly ahead, as here's the two needracing.com cars. Philip Dreis being allowed to pass by Christian Mikel. So the switch of position uh, sees Philip Dreis go back up into fourth position after being sent off a little bit by Danny Kish. So that I was shocked to see someone start from last being on softs, but there we go. As we see the replay now on board with Danny Kish over the curb, he, he had, they were side by side. He couldn't leave the room because he hit the rumble strips and it almost got even worse for the other guys into the next section, but of Philip Dreis. Now it's also worth mentioning of course push to pass 10 seconds uh, only in total in this 10 minute race so there's they've got to use it wisely. We've seen some of the drivers using a little bit already um, but you really really have to think about when you use it. It's essentially one or two shots and there we go Risto Capit on it right now. He obviously feels this is the moment. He's got off it quickly because he's got such a good slipstream so really smart driving by Capit. He's going to move to the outside of Rory McDuff as he heads towards the first corner. They're going to go side by side towards Tamburello. McDuff holding on the inside. McDuff later on the brakes than Capit who pulls back in to be nice and safe Although McDuff's gone a bit wide on the exit, and that's going to allow a cap it around Whoa. the outside on the exit of the Tamburello chicane. That is incredible stuff from Risto. They're still side by side, Lewis. This is insane. Yeah, Cap and that's Rory McDuff. Rory McDuff has gone wide. This has opened the door, though, for Philip Dreis to come through. He drags through his needracing.com teammate on Rory McDuff as well as they depart Toza. And Risto Capit, who's gone up in a second position, might well be losing it immediately. Because look at Philip Dreis as they come up towards Piratella. One goes through, two goes through. That is Christian McKell also past as his championship rival Nuno Pinto on the soft tyres coming through. Yes, indeed. Final corners ticked off. Timotej Andonovsky is going to race his way towards the line using the last of his push to pass as he heads his way for a victory for Predator R8G. He is on the medium tyres. So the results were provisionally for the first race here. Timotej Andonovsky, Philip Dreis, Christian Mikel and Risto cap it the top four. Well, what can they do as we put 10 minutes back onto the clock and get ready to go racing here for the second race of relegation in Formula Pro? And that pace down towards Abbey and the first corner as we are underway here at Silverstone. It was a decent launch from Nuno Pinto from pole position as he'll race his way and hang on to the race lead side by side in the background as they all go back into single file. Almost a little bit of contact between uh, Gianmarco Verducci and Risto Capit in the background. You can see there almost everyone on the mediums. That's Roy, uh, Turk, uh, sorry, it's Roy, Roy McDuff going a little bit wide in the background coming through Village. That is very, very tricky. Onto the hangar straight then. This is the best overtaking opportunity. You can see that from Christian Mikel, who's using the push to pass. He's going to get to the outside of Turka Hakkinen, who's offending to the inside as they head into Stowe Corner. These two on the mediums, a little bit of contact between the two. And Christian Mikel just running out a little bit wide. And look who's on the rear end, of course. It's the Triple Eight. It's Risto Capit, who joined RAG. And there's a moment as well. Turka Hakkinen defending for second position. Like his life depends on it, because Christian Mikel is using almost all of his push to pass. He's on the inside of Cops. This is going to be a brave send from Christian Mikel on his old teammate as Turka Hakkinen runs wide and weaves a touch to say, please don't do that again. And Risto Capit bites his way through up in a third position as they head through Magnus Beckers and Chapel. They did, they did very well all to get through that in one piece. And what an opportunistic move from Capit to get up to P3 on the back of Rory McDuff still in P7 is Fiducci, who'd be happy enough though with Pinto out in front. I think the key so far in this one is Dreis down in P10. You know, obviously they had a great start in the first race obviously the results all provisional there as well go. but Fiducci going to the outside we'll come back to that as he goes round McDuff lots of power but McDuff late on the brakes they're going to be side by side brilliant stuff a little bit of wheel banging but they both left each other ample room throughout the apex I've got to say that's brilliant racing and they're still side by side in the exit but McDuff gets the power down and holds on to that P6 great stuff yeah. using all of the exit curb down towards Maggots and Beckett's McDuff right on the back of Andonovsky still but there's still no way through Lewis only two and a half minutes to go he's going to have to make something work soon yeah he's got to find, he's got to pick the lock, oh. essentially. And that Mistake. would be a good launch. That was a big moment from Timotej Andonovsky in the
this could be the opportunity for Rory McDuff to try and do it. He's got to look to the inside, but the straight line speed of that Predator RHG is just about enough. 45 seconds left in the clock. That means we have started the final lap here. And is Rory McDuff going to make a move into Village? Will to. he pull to the right? No, he stays to the left. It's going to be the loop then as Fiducci gets locked up very sideways. And is McDuff going to go for it? Not quite. He's focusing on the exits yet again, but it's sideways for Andonovsky and through goes Rory McDuff into P5. That is crucial for the starting order of the next race. But will Andonovsky come back, Lewis? Will Fiducci come back into this as well as we head side by side? That was a super drive. The straight line speed is absolutely incredible. And here comes Gianmarco Fiducci to the outside. It's three wide almost on the exit of Brooklyn. It's Timotei Andonovsky trying to hang on the fifth position. He's just desperately clinging on. Rory McDuff to the outside as they head through Luffield. Nuno Pinto, there's contact! And Rory McDuff has been sent off and nearly down into the re pit relief as well. There is Nuno Pinto across the line ahead of Turka Hakkinen and Risto Kapit. Christian Mikel in fourth and Gianmarco Fiducci in fifth place. Of this three-car accident, they were, it was brilliant racing for the first half of the lap, it has to be said. McDuff on the outside, you've got Fiducci in behind. Is Fiducci going to touch, touch Andonovsky? No, it's contact solely between Andonovsky and McDuff. Fiducci stayed back, let the two of them collide. They both went either way. Provisional race results for the race here at Silverstone. The second race uh, in, uh, in relegation. Nuno Pinto to take the victory ahead of Turka Hakkinen, grabbing a second position and another great result as well. He was seventh in the first race, second in this one, and Risto Capit, Mr. Consistency himself. Well, we're getting ready because we're racing on American soil for a rolling start because of course we have to have it. It's double points. It's the final race of relegation. It's racing action once again as we head towards turn one. It's Nuno Pinto in control with Christian McKell alongside Timotei Andonovsky. You're already trying to make it three wide as we head down towards the first corner of the Macedonian on the attack and the Rocket says more car. They make contact with each other. Goodbye to Danny Kish. Goodbye to Ferris Stanley. Hello to Nuno Pinto who's at the top of the grid with Christian McKell. Rocket says balls are done for the day, are done for the season and Nuno Pinto's hanging on. More bumps, a very twisty section but another such chance for overtaking oh, manoeuvres. We have an RG car wide. off. Was that three wide between Risto Kaffir, Philip Dreis and Christian McKell as they head through Fangio and up towards Collier. It is going to be a move though from Philip Dreis who's got to the inside. Christian McKell we're looking at at the moment who's in fourth position. They're trying to hook their spots. That was a big moment though from Philip Dreis. He's just ahead. This is getting dicey action in the middle. Christian McKell behind Philip Dreis, uh, behind Risto Kaffir rather. And in the background, Timotei Andonovsky has got past both the BMK uh, sim racing cars of Turka Hakkinen and Rory McDuff with a pretty big send down into tower. It's lots of half moves for we saw an attempted move there in the background. That was Andonovsky on Fiducci, which could still be crucial to this race. Pinto doesn't seem to have the straight line speed, Lewis, and this could be another example of that because Dreis has got a better exit. We're going to see him power around the outside. I don't think Pinto has set his car up for straight line. I think he set up for corners with hard tyres earlier on the brakes than Dreis, who gets it done. Great move around the outside. Nothing Pinto could have done, and he slots into P2. This is all super, super important. Well, Philip Dreis is now looking for his second win of the evening after taking the first one post race after the penalty for the driver. That's attacking Gianmarco Fiducci. It's Timothy Andonovsky. There's Risto Capit. He's sending it on Nuno Pinto straight away. And he doesn't make it stick. That means it's going to be advantage to Philip Dreis. is going to run away because Christian McKell is also knocking the door. He's nearly been squeezed off. Oh. Dreis, will Capit make a move? He's going to look for it, though, into T1. He's going to send it into T1. He's going to complete it into T1. The Triple H's done it. But here comes Christian McKell straight down into the third corner, into Ooh. that breaking zone. Christian McKell has got himself up in the third position as well. So Nuno Pinto is going backwards at the moment. Oh, Andonovsky's gone. Andonovsky is out of the race, you're absolutely right. And so I think that might actually mean that Fordzilla are actually going to hold their position. I can't guarantee that on points, but I think because it's a double points race, I'm going to say that Team Fordzilla, and I don't know how, but what a super end of the season they've had. We'll see on board with Timotei Andonovsky. This is the reason for the retirement, so he drops it coming out towards Big Ben, and we are seeing why. The consistency they've got is incredible, but it might not be enough to win this race because Philip Dreis has to worry about Risto Cabot getting down the inside. Now, if I'm Philip Dreis, I'm not fighting it. You can go, son, because you're not my problem. And that is exactly why he didn't fight it, because if he really tried to squeeze Risto there and Risto had that moment, we could have seen Dreis in the wall, DNF. Wow. Risto Capit, what a day. I mean, he's going to come out of the final corner. He's going to come across the line, and the Triple Eight is going to win at Sebring. 
But what a deflating win it's going to be, because I don't think it's going to be enough for Predator RHG. Needracing.com come over in second and third, and Ford to, uh, with a fourth and a seventh. That should be enough. Tristo Capit, Philip Dreis, and Christian Macau rounding out the podium with Gianmarco Verducci. Rory McDuff, who will be given a 10 second time penalty, he'll drop behind uh, Turka Hakkinen. So Turka Hakkinen will get it moved up inside the top five. Rory McDuff uh, down to sixth position. Nuno Pinto will stay in seventh. That's not the way it played out, and Team Fordzilla made it through. Gianmarco Verducci and the star of the show for me a lot, in that, especially in that second race at Silverstone, Nuno Pinto picking up second place and going in alongside needracing.com. And uh, yeah, what a season of action, Lewis. What a season both in Formula Pro and Formula Challenge. It has been incredible.